unless you're new to the channel and then welcome to the channel. My name's Lawrence and you're watching Full Stack with Lawrence and today have I got a treat for you. I spent all day yesterday preparing a GitHub repository that's scaffolding for a scikit-learn logistical regression predictive model. It includes uh, a really nice set of very intuitive test data, some uh, copious notes vis-a-vis uh, -vis a Jupyter Notebook as well as the readme of the repo. Without further ado, let's just get right into it and check it out. All right, so let's jump into today's repository, the Scikit-Learn Logistic Regression Repo. And um, we're gonna clone this in just a second, but before we do, if you're new to Python, if you're new to Jupyter Notebooks or new to data science in general, take note of this readme. Uh, this contains everything that you would need to get Jupyter Notebooks up and running on your local environment. And uh, it's very helpful. Uh, all right, and so next, Let's clone this repository. I'm gonna to go to my local computer, move over to the desktop and clone this repo. And so we now see it here on the top right of the screen. Maybe, unless you see my face instead, but uh, I think you see my face instead. I'm sorry about that. But here's what we just cloned. And so we're finished with that. And uh, inside of this repo, there's a, a Jupyter Notebook folder. That's what you're looking for. And this is our file of interest for now. So we're gonna open this using Jupyter Notebooks. To do that, uh, we've got our Anaconda Navigator launcher. Here's Jupyter Notebooks. This is gonna get Python opened up for us in a browser window. There we go. Here's my desktop and here's what we just cloned just now. There's the Jupyter Notebook folder, and there's our notebook. All right, I am not gonna reread all this word for word for you, uh, but I am gonna paraphrase what we have because that's important. Uh, this is a complete set of scaffolding. So this will show you how to, using Python along with pandas, numpy, cplotlib, matplotlib, and scikit-learn, so five very important data science Python libraries, how to use those in concert with one another to do the following six things. We will load the database. We'll inspect the database looking for dirty data, looking for data anomalies, looking for suspect values, and uh, acting on some of those. We'll analyze our database looking for predictive attributes using a tool called a heat map um, that's a data visualization. We will also use box plots and histograms to get a better understanding of the shape and contours of the data that's in our database. All of that will help us to qualitatively arrive at some intuition about where the predictive capability of our model should exist. We're gonna train a model inside of this Jupyter Notebook using scikit-learn. And then once we've done that, uh, we finally will use uh, confusion matrices to measure the effectiveness, the predictive accuracy of that model. So in total, you've got histograms, heat maps, box plots, and confusion matrices. Uh, you have code samples inside of this that show you how to create each one of those. So happy learning, good luck. Let's dive into it right now. Here we go. So. Uh, to, to run this, if you're new to, uh, let's see, first of all, let's find some code. Here's our first piece of code. So here's our imports. We start here and work our way down to the end. Uh, what I wanna show you for the purposes of this video is how to run it. And you'll do that. There's this run button, uh, which doesn't really do what you would think. This runs cell by cell with uh, this green barred area being a cell. I wanna run the entire workbook and so the entire notebook. So to do that, uh, I will use this command here. So take note of that. So in the kernel menu, there's a restart and run all. And uh, before I do that, let me get the kernel window just a little bit more visible like this so that you can see what's going on. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna restart it and run all. And so that you can see some uh, there's some activity in the kernel window and then uh, momentarily, we should also see this book turn into uh, an hourglass. 
which it never did. I have no idea. So <laughs> you you were supposed to have seen an hourglass there, and that didn't, didn't happen. Uh, but we did get all of our output. So what I'm going to do now, now that I've run the entire notebook, I'm going to bounce up to the top of the document. And so now when I scroll section by section, this being a section, then the output that corresponds with that section will uh, will echo out into kind of a virtual console here. And so in this case, we're doing a bunch of system-y kind of uh, import. We're importing all of our libraries. So here's our four support libraries, Panda, NumPy, Matplotlib, and Seaborn, uh, that all support scikit-learn for the purpose of this exercise. And then here's what came out of that interesting stuff. And then uh, we've got data inspection uh, tools that come from Panda, head, tail, shape, info, and so on and so forth. Um, next section are tip, the very typical things that you're going to need to do with your data when you take this repository and substitute the database with your database. I've given you code examples of how to look for duplicate values, how to remove duplicate values, how to, um, how to identify suspect data, and so on. So that's this section here. Uh, and then I'm giving you a total of four different kinds of visualizations, the actual code samples. I'll only point out this one, and then we're just going to blow and go. So here's your code sample for how to create uh, both a box plot as well as a distribution that contains a normalized distribution overlay. That's this trio right here. Here's your code. Happy learning. Uh, hope it serves you well. And moving along, we've got some, uh, here, okay, here's our heat map, and uh, hopefully you already know what a heat map is. Uh, my goal here is to show you how to create one using Python. And uh, once you've seen it, it's really powerful. I'll use this one case right here to point out one tiny little thing. Any of the code that you see in Python, such as this, this is the code that actually generates the heat map. Um, if you want to learn more about that piece of code, you can, you can put it in Google, including the uh, library aliases that I'm using. So PLT, SNS, these are common prefixes or common aliases uh, for the respective libraries, and Google knows that. So when I put SNS heat map, it knows that I'm referring to Seaborn, which is pretty amazing. And so here's the complete set of technical documentation for this one line of code. You can see that it's a lot. Uh, Seaborn does many, many things. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, and so anything you want to know more about, that's how you do it. And that applies for every single thing that you find in, in this notebook. Okay, here's your example for how to generate a box plot. Uh, and do a couple of cool things uh, customization-wise with the data visualizations, uh, some normalized bar charts, and on and on. And then somewhere down here, here. Uh, so we've trained our model. I will stop. Um, this one-liner is how our logistical regression model was actually created. Uh, training sets were just above. I'll leave that to you to look up and find out. But uh, this this uh, one liner right here, yeah, it gets us right to scikit-learn. Here's your documentation for that. Pretty amazing. And um, this uh, actually <laughs> took some effort for me uh, to figure out how to get all this to render to my liking. Uh, so a couple of things. The confusion matrix is quite important for understanding your output, uh, whether scikit actually produce a predictive model that's going to have any predictive capability in the wild or not. Uh, but if you're newish to these, or even if you're not newish to them, uh, it's a lot of numbers and you really need to understand precisely what each one of these numbers is telling you. I'm not going to walk through that now because that's not really the purpose of this video, but I do want you to know that I created, uh, I recreated this confusion matrix uh, using Microsoft Excel, I'm trying to get these matched up next to each other. There we go. So you can see 15, 340 here, and here, 4769 here, and here. I tried my best to match the colors up. Here's what I did. Inside of Excel, this is an actual recreation of what Seaborn and um, Matplotlib are producing for you with the data sets. And so here you can see 
uh, how each one of these values is derived. So like the 90% recall for the first classifier, that's produced like this. It's the, um, it's our top left box uh, divided, I think, by the sum of the boxes, I think. D, D and E, yeah, yeah, sum of the boxes, which is that number there. All right, so uh, for each number inside of our confusion matrix, here's your key that will walk you through what you're looking at. And then through intuition, uh, you can develop your own conclusions using your own model. All right, and so uh, I leave copious notes section by section as to what I'm doing and why, and what conclusions I was able to draw using my own sample data, and I hope that serves you well. All right, that's it. I hope you found that helpful, and if you did, then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video because that's really helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.